Average Anglers. Welcome to the Average Angler Shed. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the, the pellet fishing that you may have noticed on some of my silverfish only matches that I've been doing, that I've been fishing on. Um, something that I wouldn't have done before, but um, I watched a Jamie Hughes video um, and he was doing really well with it. And so I sort of tried to copy what he was doing. And what he was doing was um, feeding my crows two mils and fishing with an expander. I don't know which one he was using, but you know, something like this, sort of sm small expander, like this sort of size. And he was like squeezing the expander so that it sank. So it wasn't, you know, um, something that already sank. It was obviously a, a, a more standard expander and he's just squeezing it so it just sank. And he's fishing that and he's putting small amounts of micros and ground bait in and uh, catching doing that and i wanted to emulate that and i went away and messed about doing that uh, and one of the things that i think was good about this method it was is the the expander is very similar to the pellets that you're feeding so you're trying to feed and fish the same hook bait and we all know that skimmers can be fi finicky feeders um but they do like these small pellets and they do love pellets so they were the keys to the thing so after a while i was like oh so I was thinking, what's the point in putting micros in and then trying to match it with an expander? And I spent a lot of time trying to, ex to match a micro with a micro and how do I hook a micro? And then I just thought, well, why don't I just put all expanders in? You know, that seems to make more sense. And I've done that and had some success doing it. Uh, and one of the things that I've done is try to find a way to make the expanders that I like using, these ones, sink. So obviously you can pump them, but then if you pump them, they go a bit softer than you would, and then this become hard to hook. So then you've got to do separate batch of hookers and a separate batch for um, for feeding, and um, it's just, you know it's just more faff in it. So what I'd like to be able to do is make this whole bag sinkable sinker sinkers, and then when I want to you know then when I want to fish, I can take a little pinch out, put it into my pot add some water to it that morning and then they're ready to fish when I get to the peg and I can use them either on the hook or I can feed them and I'm going to think, worry about it because they're sinking and I'm going to show you how I made that work. Right, so I've repositioned the camera so you can see what we're doing. It's not complicated, it's really, really easy. This is my pellet pump. It's a bit of an old school pellet pump. I've had it for ages. It's a bit big and clunky and it's a bit manky and I can't clean that off. That's where uh, different things have stuck to it over the years and I haven't cleaned it properly. So you, the visibility, that's not brilliant, but you know, it works. But from a video point of view, it's not good. I'm sorry about that. What am I going to do to make these pellets sink? Right. I'm going to put the whole lot into this pellet pump. Now you're thinking, well, if you're going to pellet pump your pellets, John, they ain't going to last very long. Now I tried this first with tried a few different things and one of the things I've tried was like some of the glugs and that that you get um, I tried it with some of the glugs and that that are on the market it just didn't work you want the pellet oil the stuff that's designed to go to make your pellets sink really it's normally marketed as pellet oil by each different brand this is the one from the pellet guys and they call it liquid elements flavored pellet oil you can just get normal pellet oil with no flavoring this one's got like a sweet flavor into it I don't know what it is but it's very sweet Yeah, it's probably Scopexy or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to totally cover that. I'm, I'm basically going to pump. I'm going to pump these pellets with this oil. Instead of using water, I'm going to I'm going to use oil. And I'm going to force that oil into them. And then I'm going to drain them off. Put this spare oil back in here so I can use it again. And there we go. Now the beauty is that they don't blow up when you put this oil into them. So, so you just pump like crazy. Pump like a madman. You can't over pump this. That's what I've found and I've done it. I've done this a few times now. I don't know if you can see so it really hard to see on the camera because it's all gone. It's all there's loads. You can see the air coming out of these pellets lot. And when this, the air comes out, I haven't let, I haven't released I haven't released the pressure yet. But as I like to make sure they're all had a good coating, 
and I've let the pressure out now and you can see because it's an oil it takes a time and maybe you can see you probably can't see with the light in but they are the ones at the bottom are starting to sink down now what I find with this is it's best sometimes to give it a second pump because even after you've done this twice you will have a few floaters but I found that not to be a problem because if because I'm using the same batch for hookers and for feed I just take the floaters off the top for the when I make my batch when I fill this up with water I have a couple of floaters on the top they become hook baits so they offset the balance of the hook nicely that the weight of the hooks nicely sorry so that they you know they footer down nice in the water get me more bites off those skimmers that are sitting just off the deck so you probably can't see that now because of the camera angle the light's coming down on the top and it's dark but the pellets are now sitting the the, the level of the water the, the liquid is there and the pellets are all below it so they're all sinking in fact when i've done it that that every single one of them is a sinker so i'm using this oil for the first time from the pellet guys when i used a different oil before but i'm using this one this time and what i'm looking for which I found, it's a bit like it's a, a pellet drainer you know like you'd use for soaking your pellets for the method i might want to might want a bigger tub but i've done quite a few pellets here not prepared again i'll fast forward that bit because that was me faffing about so i'll put that in there because it's going to be a lot of liquid and then just about to get there and that smells beautiful Smells absolutely beautiful. That sweetened pellet oil. So I'm just getting those last few out of the bottom there that have been a bit persistent and not coming out. Obviously I could have done with a bigger strainer, but I haven't that's the biggest one I've got because I don't really use them. I'm going to transfer that out of there and put it into there for the last little bit so it can drain and that oil there it's totally clean so you just go back in and not get wasted but you can see there's virtually there's, there's virtually nothing in the bottom of that container now just a little few drips so all the oil that's missing from this container is what's actually gone into the pellets so not only have you um turn them into sinkers now but you've also given them like an you've given your bait an edge because of the flavor it almost reminds me of like brazim or something that's really really sweet i can't put my finger quite on what it is and the guys at the pellet guys won't tell me i'll have to put some pressure on myself and find out what the actual flavor of that is so there we are we've got enough there to do another couple of batches no problem at all or use it for something else like your normal pellets so we'll come back in 10 minutes to get that drain off and then what i'll do then after they've been like drained off for 10 minutes is i put them back in the bag seal the bag up stick them in the fridge <laughs> things may have moved on the table from where they were when oh, you saw me a second ago that's because i've had a little bit of a disaster and spilt some water so i've had to run off and get that sorted but while i've done that you can still these see these pellets are still here and what i'm going to do is i'm, is I'm going to scoop up just a little bit of them and then i'm going to totally cover them in water And I'm hoping, I'll just if I can find that on the screen. You can see there, look, there's the water level, there's the pellets. Every one of them is a sinker, okay? And I'll put that there out of the way a minute. What we, what I generally do next, once these have drained like they have, so a little bit more oil has just has come off them there, so I'll put that back into my... ...container, because, you know, waste not, want not. And then these can go back in the fridge or any other container really it'd have to be this bag but i'm just using this bag because it's got a nice i'm using this bag it's got a nice seal on i'm really uh making a meal out of this on on live on youtube so there we are sealed up that goes back in the fridge and that's where that's going now i've got my fridge here behind me and stick him in there they go in there these they take a while to expand up quick follow-up to the end of that to the end of the video here that these pellets have been 
um, sat on the side here. I didn't do them last. I, I did that video in the evening. I didn't do them yesterday evening. I did them the evening before. So they've been there for quite some time. You can see the water. Maybe picking up on the camera, but the water's got a slight murk to it. That's the oil that's in them. But they are still. I didn't let my camera's focusing on that. Very nice and firm. You can put a hook in them. They won't give you any problems at all. Okay. And they smell beautiful because they've got that oil on. And they've gone back. To, they, they're, they're not nice light colour. Which is what I wanted from the, uh, the pellets I like to use for skimmers. For some reason I found that they're like a lighter one. You know, well, I've got more confidence than a lighter one. So when you... Um, when you soak them up, they go back to their original colour. When you, you might have no, you might notice if you do this that when you pump them with um, the oil, they go darker. But I don't know whether the water pushes the oil back out and you end up with an expander that's sinking or how what the process is. But they do lose, they, they go back to their nice colour. So these are these are more than twenty four hours old. They've not been kept in a fridge or anything to keep them cool. Although it's not been warm in my shed because it is, you know, the first couple of days in March. And you can see them spongy look. I'll squeeze one to the point where it breaks. That fell back in, but if I squeeze one to the point where it's like goes flat, you can see that it still wants to stay in one piece. So they're really quite durable for the hook. Even now, like even though I've broken it to pieces, it's still like an element of um it wanting to stay in one piece. So they're gonna be great. And like I've already said, you'll see me using these as stuff for more. And you'll probably see me using these before that. Although it depends on when I put this video out there as to whether you see it before or after. But um, next time you see me fishing and you see me putting these on the hook, you might have already seen me putting them on the hook, but this is how I've been doing them. All right, guys. I just thought I'd give you that tip. And, and it's like, uh, I know you can, put, you can buy these products. You can buy products on the market where the pellets already sink out of the bag. And if you want to use them, use them. But um, there might be brands that you like there might be color differences that you want you can you, also you can do this with any size of pellet any shape of expander anything you want um so and it's entirely it, it just gives you that freedom and yes it's a bit of a faff about for when you do it but now i've got a bag full so it was a faff for you know 10 minutes but now every time i go fishing i'll just pick up a pinch put them in this tub load it to the top with water put it in my bait bag and when, by the time i get to the bank they're ready to fish so that's great i've also done them the night before but keep them in the fridge the night before because being a bit colder does keep them a bit tougher obviously like everything in the world the hotter things get the softer they get so yeah that's my tips see how you get on guys